I met a really great young church planner a number of years ago. He made an appointment to come and see me because after four years of church planning, his church was stuck and he couldn't get past the 200 barrier. Somebody suggested he called me. So as we were sitting there, I asked him what about his church plant. He revealed that he had planted three other daughter churches as well. And one of those churches had crossed the thousand person attendance. And I said, wow, no disrespect for you, but how is it that the daughter church has crossed a thousand and you're still struggling to pass the 200 barrier? His response was, well, that pastor from the beginning had a systems person next to him. And that person, that's all he did was build systems. And therefore the church grew. And he says, I don't know systems and I need to learn them. I agree with him that he needed to learn systems. But the truth is that he, like all other pastors generally that I know, will not build systems. I don't mean that they won't get systems built, but they personally will not build systems. You probably will not personally build systems because you're not wired that way. You're wired to uh, preach and to teach and to counsel people and, uh, and lead them somewhere. But, uh, but the fact is, is that, you know, this is not going to hold your interest. And yet I'm going to tell you right up front that you need to know systems. And here's why, because if you know systems, it'll keep you from feeling helpless about where your church is. Quite often when we're working with people within our church, we see them step up to the plate only to die off a little bit later because they didn't, you know, they weren't really enjoying what they're doing. Or you feel like, you know, people are going around in circles and we're really not making any progress forward because we're not organized to go forward. We don't know how to disciple people or we're not effective in evangelism or we don't know how to train new leaders among us or, you know, we don't seem to have a rhythm for using our building in an appropriate way that helps us to grow. This is all systems issues. And the fact is, is that you need to learn systems so that you know who you need to recruit to help you to accomplish the systems building in your church. A lot of pastors never have the right partners in this area. We get really nice people and they say, wow, they're, they're willing to volunteer. Let's give them the evangelism system, build the system for me. And a year goes by and nothing happens, you know, or we have somebody who, you know, it seems to be a, a tremendous prayer warrior. And we say, would you build us a, a, a spiritual life system where more people are engaged in pursuing God, intimacy, and prayer? And time goes by and nothing really happens. I mean, they start a prayer service and it just peters out. And we say, well, that's not working for us. The reason why things don't work for us is we get the wrong people into place and think that they can accomplish what they're not made to do. We're not made to do it. We need to find the right people who are made to do it, to start our systems and to train leaders to lead those systems so that they become sustainable. I tell you this because if you start searching out information on systems, it may surprise you that you don't even really know what we mean when I say the word system. What I mean by this is that there are 18 biblical functions that every church needs to be doing to be a healthy church, to have them working in a healthy level. Sometimes people get the impression there are only eight or nine. There's quite a few more. And, the, and this is why you need to know this, because when you look at your church, you need to be able to say, okay, I see things that are not in place that I need to make sure get put into place. I need to recruit the right people to help me get them into place so that we build the systems that are going to help us to move forward and uh, reach people with the gospel and retain more disciples.